So what are the future challenges? And this is just to give you an idea that in 2020, some of us were involved into the change from NAFLD to MAFLD. And this came as the first guideline yeah. of MAFLD globally. So a puzzle can feel happy about it. Yeah. And according to this today, anybody with steatosis, which Professor uh, Chen has just showed you, anybody who is overweight or is diabetic obviously has MAFLD. Only for lean or normal weight, we would require the metabolic criteria of waist, blood pressure, triglycerides, HDL. So with this in mind, a very large population is straight away will get into MAFLD. So what is the new concept? Earlier, we were dividing alcohol and NAFLD. And NAFLD was on to pure steatosis and pure NASH. But today we combine. And therefore, some of the cryptocirrhosis, some of the metabolic, some of the overlap, and some of the alcohol will come into it. So I feel MAFLD is a better criteria than, and a better term than NAFLD. Our problem will remain is a diagnostic criteria and do we need a liver biopsy? Like for NASH, we need a biopsy. A large population, 60% in many countries, have mild to moderate drinking. They need to be considered because you can't exclude half the population. So I think MAFLD is better. A challenge is a diagnostic criteria. This is for a uh, sake of reference, this large and the only study, if a person with alcoholic cirrhosis has a positive family history of metabolic traits, so patients who have family history or personal history of metabolic traits have a 3.3 times higher risk of early cirrhosis 13.2 times progression to cirrhosis with lesser amount of alcohol and 4.6 times lesser duration of alcohol. Why I want to stress in this large series of 1,000 alcoholic cirrhotic patients that metabolic traits have a large role to play in alcoholic uh, liver disease. And nearly 63% have this uh, population has metabolic traits, in India at least. So our APSL guidelines, which were the first on MAFLD, divide patients into those who have no baseline evidence of fibrosis. You can do it by FIB4, NAFS, you can use FibroScan, and very elegantly shown by previous speaker on FibroTouch or RFA. So we use both these and we feel that if there is less than six liver stiffness, you can bring him uh, in two to three years time. If there is evidence of fibrosis, I'll come to it. You need every year assessment. And if there is evidence of cirrhosis, you need to monitor every six months and look for liver cancer. Some of these would require biopsy, especially if you like to put on protocols. This is the Bevino uh, 7 and where Professor Ji Dong Jia had a very excellent article recently published. So compensated advanced chronic liver disease using FibroScan or FibroTouch, a rule of five. Rule of five, if it is less than 10 is stiffness, you can exclude compensated advanced chronic liver disease, call them every maybe three years or so. However, if you are between 10 and 15, then there can be concern, especially if your platelets are low. With 15 and low platelets, certainly you need a biopsy. Above 20, you don't need platelets, it is cirrhosis. So three categories, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, will depend upon the platelet count. And therefore, a combination of platelets plus 
uh, liver stiffness is important. Of course, about 25, you will have clinically significant portal hypertension. So this is a flow. A patient with a steatosis, if he has hazardous moderate to severe alcohol, no, he is simply MAFLD. If he has alcohol, then you divide them into categories based on diabetes or metabolic syndrome. So which is the main component? Is it alcohol? Then it is alcohol associated. And if it is metabolic, it is metabolic. Or if it is the two together, then both are contributing to it. What efforts India have done and how you can consider it for China and rest of Asia? First is the change in attitude. So we are educating the public. Change your approach from fatty liver, so what? to that liver can be an alarm if fat is there and MAFLD is a pandemic, public participation. So teach your barbers, teach your family, teach your friends, teach your tailor, teach your children that fit genes onto you, not fit into genes. India is the first country to integrate the public health measure of NAFLD into the non-communicable disease program as a national program. So fatty liver is now part of a national program. So the guidelines on NAFLD integrating into the national program on uh, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, stroke and cancer was released last year. And the program is a bottom-up approach. A community health worker will only ask about high-risk individuals and will refer those with metabolic traits to a primary health center, then to community, and then to the district health center. And for us, we feel that while the terminology is getting accepted, we need to have a phenotype of MAFLD. As I told you, alcohol is separate. You can combine, but you have to have lean and normal weight. You have to have obese, diabetic with pure MAFLD, and of course, all other category. And all of them we work to prevent liver cancer. And we have to see that the gut microbiome gets a due recognition. So for us, and all countries in Asia to take leadership, I think we have to start implementing policies after accepting MAFLD and defining the phenotype. Certainly, we need to see that we include assessment like we have said of the community at large, that yes, the whole community like you're doing in China, uh, many of us are doing in the country in India, and we are looking into large scale screening. I thank you. I feel this field is open, MAFLD. But yes, whatever name you give, we need to screen the population for complications of uh, fatty liver and uh, cirrhosis and fibrosis. Thank you.